Hello and welcome to Allegheny County Libraries. Let's get lit. Well, this is where we talk about exciting titles so you, our patrons, can know what to read next. We will be talking about hot new titles to the library and also still burning titles, which may be older but are ones we have loved. Let's Get Lit is available in video format on the ACLS YouTube as well as in podcast format on Apple, Google, and Spotify, so you can subscribe for updates when we release new episodes. Let's Get Lit will be bi-monthly and we would love your feedback as we do this. Contact information will be in the description as well as at the end of the episode. Any titles mentioned will have links to our catalog in the description as well. Now, let's get lit. I'm Allie. I'm Shane. I'm Liz. I'm Laura. And today's topic is going to be nonfiction. I'm Yay! That's what we're going to start with. Okay, so I will talk about my first one. I love nonfiction, so I could talk for 7,000 years. But um, one of the books that I listened to during the um, quarantine period was called Castle on Sunset by Sean Levy. We have it, uh, we have the print book, and we also, it is on the overdrive. You can listen to the audio. It is about the um, Hotel Marmont, Chateau Marmont, I was called Hotel, but Chateau Marmont in LA, and it's the history of it, and there was some crazy stuff that happened there. Um, if you like movies, classic Hollywood, pop culture, history, any of the above, you will love that book. Um, it had so much, so many juicy stories in there. Um, and also it talked about the, you know, the golden age of Hollywood. So, and there's a little ghost action in there for those who like that. So what are some of the things that happened at the Chateau Marmont? Um, many, many things happened. I guess probably the one that most people would be the, the most aware of is, um, Belushi mm -hmm. overdose oh, okay. there. Right. Um, and he was found there and then there was, um, pretty much. All of the classic stars, like Vivian Lee, she played Scarlet and Gone with the Wind. Uh, she was Blanche, Blanche Dubois, Du Bois, Bois. Du Bois. Yeah. and um, Streetcar Named Desire. She uh, lived there right after her split from her husband, and she also had like a, was having a manic episode. So yeah, pretty much any, and it goes all the way up through. I think Lindsay Lohan's probably like the last celebrity. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, she ran up like a seventy-five thousand dollar bill or some, something. Uh, but it's, we might have to take that out for libel. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was actually some, but like it. So it incorporates that, and just like all the classic stars, which I grew up watching all the classic movies, so like I've recognized the names. But it, it's never not interesting, right. fascinating. But yeah, I listened to it, and I thought it was I. I thought it was really well done. So. Splendid in the Vile by Eric Larson. Woo. I listened to that. Oh, it's a look at a very colorful man who was the leader, the Prime Minister of England. Churchill. Learned a lot of things about him I didn't know. And he is very eccentric. As a leader, he was a great leader. He had fortitude. Yeah, he did. We saw him speak at... PLA. You saw Winston Churchill speak at Yeah. No, Eric. Oh, well, for a second, I thought, like, does she know that Winston Churchill has been for a while? <laughs> Maybe we should do this another time. Well, we need to have this discussion off camera. <laughs> and what's good about this book is it's things that you didn't know were revealed, and they talked about things that were not. It reads, in other biographies. And it reads and you listen like a movie. Yeah, right. That's what's in your head. Like right. That's how it's not dry or dull for a minute. No. And if you don't have to be like a history buff to, to like this. In fact, I would recommend it to non-history buffs because it will engage you and it gives you what you need to know. It is mm -hmm. fascinating. Don't list yeah. his books read. It's like fiction. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. 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 Anything by him, anything yeah. right. is yeah. good. Devil in the White City is my personal favorite of his. But he can turn any... Uh, historical minutiae in movie. Yeah, stuff, so. it, he, he's got the touch. You're up, Allie. Ooh. I mean, if we're going to talk about historical and more modern day, I feel like I have to mention Stamped from the beginning. Uh, shameless plug for our other YouTube videos and discussions on that. Well, they're good. They're they're good. Yeah. Well, yeah. the the books are very informative. There's Stamped from the beginning, and then there's the wide version, which is like the Stamped remix, which is just basically a shortened version of it. Uh, but it's about the history of racist ideas and policies within America's history. It's a really enlightening read. Very hard topics to discuss, but things that were just amazing to learn about that no one's ever mentioned before in history, 
it seems like that all these things are just kind of hidden because we don't want to focus on the bad. But well, and that's know. difficult, like you said. It's it's difficult, well, but the only way to get past that is to study it and talk about it and to learn. Yeah. yeah, kind of going into that, another one would be the fire this time, which is a collection of stories and different uh, people who wrote about race in America and their different experiences with it. And one that really stuck out to me was about a woman who was trying to find her history about her family and going to places where they had literally like covered the graveyards where her families had been buried because those people did not matter. So um, they were just really impactful stories. It's a really short collection, really fast to get through and really enlightening. On that somber note, <laughs> well, I'll go with the history theme. Because um, I have another one, which we have the um, actual print book here, but I listened to it on Hoopla. It's called The Five by Haley uh, Rubin Held. Rubin Hold, I, I apologize to everybody for mangling their names, but it focuses on the five victims of Jack the Ripper, the ones that are in the canon. I personally think there's more, but that's a topic for another day. Um, and what I like about it is um, anything having to do with Jack the Ripper, whether it's the books or podcasts or movies, he kind of comes out as a bit of a, a folk hero. Um, you know, it's old, you know, Jack the Ripper and all that stuff. And, you know, I mean, he, he slaughtered people. Well, he's more um, infamous than any of his victims. Yes. And so what The Five does that's fascinating is that it focuses on the victims. It makes them people, which they were. They were real people who were slaughtered. Um, and so it, and it also talks about the uh, economic and social constructs in England. How did England get that way? How did Whitechapel get that way? Um, and it explains if you like anything having to do with Dickens, anything having to do with Victoria England, it doesn't, it's not grisly, it doesn't, it stops when it gets to the fact that they were killed. It doesn't go into all the gore. But it explains who these women were. It makes them people. It puts a it puts a face to them, which it should. It doesn't, and he's just kind of like the afterthought in the back, kind of like Manson was in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He was the catalyst for all this pain, but they don't focus on him. And that's what's amazing about it. And so anything, like, it really explains, like, what workhouses are. Because if you watch A Christmas Carol, you know, Scrooge says, well, they can go to the poorhouse. They can go to the workhouse. Like, it explains what those were and why people wouldn't want to go there. Um, and it really gets into the nitty-gritty of it. It doesn't sugarcoat it. It explains um, what's happening. Did you ever read From Hell back by Alan Moore and Eddie Campbell? I have not read it. Uh, didn't you get the, was that the graphic novel? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> no, but I opened it up, and we were both just opened it up, and yep. that was quite to a scene an, to yep. an interesting page, and I was like, "Wait, what?" Um, I've seen the movie because Ooh. I'm a Johnny Depp fan. Um, the movie is. Uh, Here we go with the movie. The movie time. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I did look through the book. Yeah. Um, I had it to read, and then it was due. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my renewal limit. I would say that um, we, we do have it in the system. Oh, do we? Okay. Uh, and okay. in print. Um, if you're interested in a uh, thorough ex examination of Jack the Ripper, who he was, uh -huh. and then the detailed description of the murders themselves, mm -hmm. and then a conspiracy theory. That well, I love up. conspiracy <laughs> theories. Yeah. So. Then that's the Jack the Ripper story that you want to okay. pursue. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I've changed my mind a hundred times as to who I think. I don't know if we'll ever know. It is, it is one of the world's greatest mysteries. Killing Crazy Horse by Bill O'Reilly. What can I say? What can it I is say? It is a graphic novel. Um, you mean graphic as in? Oh, it's it, the brutality. Yes. It's not it a graphic. Brutal. <laughs> it is a brutal novel about the war against the Native Americans. What stands out, they talk about the treaties that were broken and from the beginning, the lands that were taken from the Indians and they were moved from the east, west. Whenever it came to money or profit, when the gold, when they found gold, they took that land away from them. Mm -hmm. Whatever they found that was worth money, they took from them and continued to move them. And it was a little bit like Killers of the Flower Moon, a little bit. Killers of the Flower Moon. Well, this is only recommended that. That I recommended that. <laughs> The Indians um, in that book were killed because the land, 
that they were given produced oil. Any group of people that were treated unfairly, it was them. It is problematic when you take something that someone else owns. <laughs> Right. And their right. land, their resources, and their, their culture. Yeah. They they yeah. wanted to take away their culture, and they did. It's true. Isn't November uh, Indigenous History Month? Well, there you go. So Perfect. Great read for November. Yes, on a happier note, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my all-time favorite nonfiction is The Rise and the Fall of the Dinosaurs. <laughs> Which, if you would have told me and going into that, she's not joking. <laughs> that is her all-time favorite. If you would have told me going into that that I was going to love it, I would have. I would not have believed you because I thought it was going to be way over my head. I wasn't going to understand it, but it's written in a way that's very, well, it's easy to understand, and it does start at the beginning of uh, how dinosaurs came and how they grew, and basically it was just big crocodile-type things roaming the earth for a long time. Yeah, he's a paleontologist, and he mixes his life stories in with it about being a paleontologist, and coming across these different dinosaurs and how they kind of come to the conclusions that they do. And it was just so fascinating. I would recommend listening, but also having a physical copy so you can see the pictures. I was gonna say it has a lot of yeah. illustrations. It was yes. a pretty book. Yes, yeah. A very, very oh, yes. pretty book. It's on display in my house because I, believe I it. love it so much. Every person I've recommended it to that has actually picked it up has really enjoyed it too. Memorial Drive has a new book. It's written by Natasha Trethaway, and it's about um, a daughter's recollection of her mother's life and death. She's also a poet. That's what she's known for. Here's some of that lyrical writing in this book. It's a small book, but it's really worth a read. She did a very good job. I guess I, guess I should plug uh, a newer book uh, by Alexis Ko. Alexis Ko uh, had a podcast in 2016, I believe, called uh, Presidents for People Too. And it was sort of a humanizing look at all the presidents um, from beginning to most recent. When I found out that she was putting this book out about Washington, it's called You Never Forget Your First. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised to see such a humorous take on George Washington, our first president. Um, the tone from the podcast perfectly translated over into the book. It's light, it's fun, um, and she knows what she's talking about. So that's Alexis Coe's You Never Forget Your First and Unauthor Unauthorized Biography of George Washington. It sounds like she humanizes it. They become not even human to us anymore right. because they're just these Historical mythical figures, figures yeah. that never did anything wrong and yeah. never laughed and never... Never told a lie or yeah. whatever. whatever right. They won't chop down the yeah. cherry tree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but I mean, that's good because they are people. Yeah. Well, they were people. And it sounds not dry. Yeah. Right. Which mm -hmm. a lot of people tend to stay away from historical stuff because it tends to be more dry. Talking about George Washington, I recommend anything by Ron Chernow. He did, Grant is what I have um, read and listened to most recently, but he also did a book about Washington, Alexander Hamilton. I think he also wrote about some of the robber barons as well. And um, if you listen to it or read it, it also, it, it's more academic, but it's not dry at all. Um, and we have the print book, and then we also have the audio book. It is a commitment, but they're definitely worth it. So anything by Ron Chernow is amazing. And then if you, if you do, if you're into memoirs, I would recommend Grant's memoirs. There's a rumor that um, Mark Twain wrote them. He did not write them. Grant wrote them. For money, though. Um, anyway. Yes. Well, his family, he had lost all of his money. Grant yeah. had lost his fortune in, yeah. in speculation, right. what they call it. I don't know what speculation is. Something with the market, mm -hmm. uh, Wall Street type thing. And so then he also found out he was dying of throat cancer. So he finished that book while he was dying. He finished it like two months before he died or something. Yeah. And it made enough money that it supported his wife and kids instead. Um, but yes, it's amazing. Like, I was just like, this is fantastic because, I don't know, you don't look at Grant and think of a soulful writer. Mm -hmm. um, most people don't look at Grant and think anything at all. But um, <laughs> yeah, his, his memoirs are amazing. Does the writing sound like Mark Twain? Is that why people think of it? I don't. I guess because Mark Mark Twain, I think where it originated is, is Mark Twain suggested that he write. Oh, okay. And Mark Twain has also, he also came out and like spoke about it later because there was rumors where he wrote it for him. Because, it, because I'm telling you, the level of writing you're just going to be like, seriously? Because you're not expecting it. You're not expecting a, soul, a soulful read. Mm -hmm. 
by Ulysses S. Grant, yours not. That is it for all the nonfiction recommendations. Be sure to check the description for any of the links to these for, to our catalog, and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us for Let's Get Lit. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. If you have any questions, suggestions, or want recommendations, please contact us either in the comments section, by giving us a call, or by emailing us at letsgetlit at allegheny